Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, how about these topics? Guns, gay rights, and legalizing marijuana. Believe it or not, they could be for, they could be before the Pennsylvania legislature this spring. Uh, Pennsylvania politics and government in depth and in detail, and guess what? It all starts right now. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, this looks like a program dedicated to social issues, I think we could say. Joining me is a trio of the state's leading reporters. Sitting across from me is Keegan Gibson. He's the managing editor of politicspa.com. Get on that website. It's a great website. I'm on there every day. Sitting next to him is Mary Wilson with Pennsylvania Public Radio. She also does, some of your reports end up on national public radio because I've heard them. And sitting next to me is Laura Olson. She's the bureau chief the Harrisburg Bureau Chief, the State Capitol Bureau Chief from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Did I get that right, Laura? Perfect. Okay. All right, Laura, let's start with the reverse order. We now have legislation introduced by Dale and Leach, Senator Leach from Montgomery County, dealing with the legalization of pot. Yep. Do I got that uh, right? Yeah, in the memo out uh, from him, he said, you know, I think that marijuana is, you know, less dangerous than beer. It's, you know, costing a lot to uh, incarcerate folks for, mm -hmm. for offenses that really aren't as dangerous as maybe maybe they appeared. Yeah. And, you know, we should legalize it. We should follow what Washington did and Colorado voters did in the election mm -hmm. and say, if you are over the age of 21, you should be able to consume marijuana. Does that mean as much? I didn't, does the bill have any specifics in it? Have you seen the actual legislation yet? The, Go ahead. These bills, uh, they're introduced every session, uh, usually by Dale and Leach or, or maybe Mark Cohen or Mark in a Philadelphia some of the, the Democrat, southeast, right? li, you know, a liberal contingent of the state government, and um, they come in various forms. There's also a bill on the table to legalize medical marijuana. Yeah. Uh, neither of them is, uh, is looking like it's moving too fast to the legislature. Yeah. Is that because be in the ahead. past, they've, these bills have you know, stayed in committee. You know, right. they haven't gotten you know, a whole lot of attention. Is that, be I mean, look, Republicans, Mary, Republicans control both chambers. We er just, everybody knows that. We have a Republican governor. So chances of the legalization of marijuana becoming law anytime soon in Pennsylvania is close to zero? Yeah, close to zilch. There's not even, the, the support for these bills are shaky even among Democrats. among Democrats. You talk to Democratic lawmakers who are like, well, we're not quite sure. The governor has said he would veto such, you know, such a such a measure if it came to his desk. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Scary. I know you want to. <laughs> yeah, um, it's not exactly as I say, you'd still, have to be, yeah. you definitely have to be uh, not with all your faculties if you thought you can imagine Tom Corbett signing a marijuana yeah. legalization bill. Um, the problem I think that advocates for that kind of legislation have is that Pennsylvania is an older state. Right. I mean, we're one of the oldest states, I think second oldest in the entire country, and there's absolutely a generational divide on this issue. If you break down the numbers, people over the age of 45 or especially older than 55 absolutely oppose it. Yeah. People under, you know, under that age cut off or a little bit warmer to it. But. Yeah, but Laura, let me ask you this. Uh, I've done some surveys on it. The voters are opposed to it. There's no doubt about it. Keegan's right about that. Some has to do with the age. But there's also popular support for medical marijuana, right? Popular support. Now, is there any, uh, but the governor, I think, am I right about this, has said no. Yeah, he said that he thinks it's a gateway drug. And that's something Senator Leach and the supporters disagree with. But, you know, he, he's the, a prosecutor coming at this from a very prosecutorial perspective, saying that he thinks, you know, no on drugs. No on drugs. So before we leave the topic, it's, it's fanciful. We, we sort of like to talk about it because, you know, go ahead. Well, uh, marijuana, uh, uh, a subset of the marijuana chemical is used in pharmaceuticals that are legal in Pennsylvania. So it wouldn't be too much of a bridge for medical marijuana. To do medical they, marijuana. You can make a case for that. And that's probably, you know, about 15 yeah. or 20 years ahead of the recreational use yeah. in but Pennsylvania. Medic, but but you, you, you all cover the legislature. I mean, not much chance even medical marijuana is going to be brought up. Would you well, agree? Well, not, not if the governor is kind of like drawing his line in the sand yeah. like this. I think I think what's interesting is that even with even if medical marijuana were legalized, it still wouldn't fix you know this economic 
you know, Damon Leach, when he wrote this letter about right. wanting to introduce this legislation again, said there's an economic argument to be made. You know, Laura mentioned the millions of dollars right. spent on, you know, jailing people. Yeah. Um, you know, if but that's I, not decriminalized, yeah. that, that's not fixed. Before we run to a break, but I, I did read, I thought I read where some Republican lawmakers said they wouldn't be adverse to, med to you know, medical marijuana, that that doesn't seem, <clears throat> you know, maybe, I don't think they're going to put a vote up and have Governor Corbett veto it yeah. when you get into a controversy. But that probably has a little better chance, but still not likely. It's, yeah, I mean, there's a distinction, but I mean, you also have to look at um, the, the year we have ahead with a bunch yeah, well, of fiscal issues, with transportation, with pensions. Pension, By the time we get yeah. down the list to, to marijuana, even and medical no one marijuana, ever would ever a stretch. Accuse the legislature of moving too quickly on too many <laughs> things, right? The, the, Unless it's a pay increase. Unless, okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, Gun control legislation uh, since the shooting in Newtown Square. We got uh, pr uh, Vice President Biden with a commission that's supposed to make a report and probably will by the end of the year. We're going to talk about gun control in Pennsylvania following these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania Business Council Education Foundation educating citizens and business leaders about important public policy issues and civic affairs. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by BetterSaferRoads.com. To voice your support for safer highways and less traffic congestion, visit BetterSaferRoads.com. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to the program. Uh, we're doing with a variety of uh, of important social issues, Mary Wilson, Keegan Gibson, and Laura Olson, uh, all journalists all are here. We're chatting about uh, these important topics. Keegan, I start, I'm going to start with you. Uh, gun control, man, we have everybody weighing in. Ideas like ban assault weapons, li limit magazine clips, uh, end gun show loopholes, man, it goes on and on. Governor Corbett has weighed in on this. Uh, former Governor Rendell has weighed on this. We even have now Kathleen Kane, mm -hmm. the new, uh, the Attorney General a uh, new attorney general who says assault weapons must go. Uh, let's talk a little bit about where you think this could head in the Pennsylvania legislature. Well, it's, there's, when you talk about gun issues, there's the, the broad cultural debate between people who don't see a place for guns in society and people that go hunting and it's a, an important part of their culture. And that's one of those debates that's just irreconcilable. But there are some individual issues where there's some leeway. Even gun owners think that there ought to be better background, background checks and complete checks, right. background checks. So um, there have been legislation, even some Republicans have put forth in the state house some legislation that would help to tweak the background check program and feed it into the federal system to help people in Pennsylvania, make sure people in Pennsylvania that shouldn't right. buy guns aren't allowed to. Right. Mary, Mary. Uh, one of the other things that the governor did talk about, I don't, did you, I don't know if you got to interview him at the end of the year and whether you folks were, I know a lot, lots of you got to interview the governor, talked about sort of redefining mental illness. We don't have a good, what, what's your take on that, that side of it? Do you, would, would, would you agree with Keegan that that has some possibility that the legislature, while they're not going to do assault weapon bans and clips, might go into that direction? It's, it's possible. To me, listening to that, that was that was something to throw out there, okay. and it wasn't. There wasn't a whole lot of. Um, it, it, it was something to talk about at the moment that would that that was not talking about gun control. That was not seeming like you know you right. know gun control is our is our next rabid cause. Right. But there were no specifics behind that. So when Governor Corbett mm -hmm. said the focus should be on mental illness, you know the question was asked, well, does that mean more money being spent on mental health programs this year? And he says, well, then we'd have to reprioritize the whole budget. You know, yeah. well, well, that doesn't mean a whole I lot, right? Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. Well, and he, he was also saying kind of the, the state-federal divide of, you know, a, an assault weapon ban wouldn't be something to do here in Pennsylvania. Yeah. That would be something at the federal level. He was, he was kind of doling out some of these issues yeah. to other places. And yeah, so I couldn't... It's a little unclear what he would actually support, if anything, yeah, at this I, point. Yeah, when I interviewed him, I couldn't... He said he didn't think it was a state responsibility, is what he told me. 
And I didn't get the sense that he, I didn't know if, if it was, he thought it was, would be illegal for the state to do it, you know, that that was primarily a federal role. I didn't, I didn't quite get that. Do any of you know, do you think, th oh. go ahead, Mary. Well, go. I, th I, my read on it is just that if individual states pass like an assault weapons ban, right. it's fine if, you know, if all of them do it, but if just a couple do, oh, if, you do it, point. then you've got guns traveling across state borders. So it doesn't so matter. You're yeah. Ben, I mean, is that yeah. what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. From a, he's coming from a uh, prosecutorial standpoint, and he has dealt with cases that, that have to do with gun running and, and mm -hmm. illegal gun sales. So, I mean, yeah, unless you can plug every hole in the dam, you're probably better starting with a federal level. But back yeah. to what Keegan was saying about background checks, I mean, that's the way to kind of get at this mental yeah. illness aside. It's just unclear yet what of those aspects the governor might support. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, yeah, the, one of the points he made was that there's this disconnect between the state database and the national database, and maybe that's something that uh, Vice President Biden yeah. and that commission. Yeah. Go ahead. The, the, one of the frustrating things about this issue is that both sides are really, really in tough to get to move and you know even one inch in one direction you know is seen by the other side as as, a, as an attack and so groups like the National Rifle Association have opposed efforts to tighten background checks in the past and the real question is in the wake of this tragedy in Newtown do they ease up on some of those and and remove the threat of um, of uh, campaigning against lawmakers right. that vote for those kinds of things as opposed to directly, laws that directly impact yeah. firearms and their availability. But, but let, let's sort of see if we can summarize where we stand and you tell, you'll say yes or no. Uh, <clears throat> ban assault weapons in Pennsylvania coming anytime soon? Unlikely. I also say no. No, so we don't know that, okay. Uh, legislation to limit uh, these large clips anytime soon? I, I really doubt it. Doubt yeah. it. So it's unlikely. unlikely, better chance, but still unlikely. Unlikely, all right. One of the things, how about limit the number of guns that can be purchased? That was a big one with Governor Rendell. Any chance from your covering the legislature? It's a little unclear at this point. Unclear? I Likely. Still, I still think it's a long shot. Yeah, the, I don't see Republicans getting behind that. I see Democrats. So the only thing in, in summary then, <clears throat> we went through some of the big things, that you, that you think the legislature might do would be more with background checks, trying to find out, you know, keep... Uh, uh, w what they do with mentally ill and who can obtain weapons, that, that's still tough to define. Yeah, they might, they might um, you know, make uh, penalties stricter for people that violate existing right. laws and that sort of thing, but that's about the end of it. Okay, so we're not moving very far here. It doesn't look like we're going to legalize marijuana or medical marijuana. It looks like we're going to do very much with gun control. Let, we're going to try gay rights, and we'll see if Pennsylvania is going to legalize gay marriage anytime soon. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> this broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. I welcome back to the program where we're talking about a, a trio of important uh, social issues. Pennsylvania, I think everybody around this table would agree, fairly conservative state. We're not going to, Pennsylvania's not going to be in the vanguard. We're trying to figure out what the Pennsylvania legislature, which has returned to a new session, is likely to do with them. And now we turn to uh, a, a gay marriage. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Mary. Gay marriage. Uh, you know, a handful of states have it. Is, from your interviews and reporting, is, is that something that you think the Pennsylvania legislature is likely to take up anytime soon? No. 
<laughs> Short answer, no. No, <laughs> but you may see more of a push um, for uh, anti-discrimination legislation, um, which has been introduced in the past, which is going to be reintroduced, I think has already been reintroduced for yeah. this session. We've got our first elected out member of the legislature, right. and by coincidence, we've got two, because one made kind of a surprise announcement right. um, when and the one's legislature a was out of <clears throat> Do I got this right? One Democrat, one Republican? Is right. that right? Right, yeah. so yeah. Brian from Center City, Philadelphia, and one from uh, the middle of rural, you know, So we South got an urban and a rural, <clears throat> okay. So what you're basically saying is we have two openly gay members of the Pennsylvania legislature, and that's historic, right? Right, Go ahead. but what, what we don't have is it, are, are two members who say they're gonna be part of a, <clears throat> you know, like a, a push for anti-discrimination okay. legislation. We've got one, a Republican, who, you know, just came out, and he said, you know, this doesn't change my political convictions. Right. And we've got another one from Philadelphia, Brian Sims, who's um, very much, you know, he used to be on the board of Equality PA, or he used to be president of the board. Um, so, so very much coming from that strain mm -hmm. and, and going to push for this anti-discrimination. Yeah. What about, when we talk about anti-discrimination specifically, what, what does that, would that entail? Sure, Go. what it means is um, right now, uh, you, you can't be fired from your job for your gender or for your race or your religious convictions. It would just add sexual orientation to that list. Right now in Pennsylvania, if, if I'm an employer, I can fire somebody for being gay if, right. if, if I want to. And uh, Pennsylvania is one of 29 states that fall under that category. And the number one issue that gay rights activists are pursuing in this state is a law that would prevent that from happening. And the reason that they have an in is not just because there's a gay Republican and a gay Democrat in the state house. It's because there's an economic argument for anti-discrimination. If, if I were a gay person, I wouldn't want to come to Pennsylvania if I could lose my job. You know, it's not... Yeah. It's not good. It doesn't develop. It doesn't help develop population growth and economic growth in the state. Yeah. Well, the surveys <clears throat> that I've seen indicate that I don't think gay marriage is. Not, you know, we can't argue that that's not controversial. But discrimination doesn't seem to be. You know, wouldn't seem to be a huge problem for the legislature. I guess it would. Be, go ahead. Sure. And that, that's uh, like Keegan was saying. That's such a more you know fundamental part yeah. of your life as opposed to uh, marriage brings some tax benefits and other things. But um, being able to be secure in your employment, that would be yeah. huge. But I thought one of the things, again, that polling tends to show is a huge, and, and Keegan talked about this in another respect a few minutes ago, a huge demographic divide with young voters overwhelmingly in favor of gay marriage, older voters not. Again, we live in a state, as Keegan pointed out, where we do have one of the older populations, and so we have that going on, which mitigates, I think, also against gay marriage, uh, gay marriage legislation. But uh, go ahead. No, any, any, uh, so on this issue, before we take a break and come back for the final segment, None of you see any possibility in the short term that Pennsylvania will legalize gay marriage. Is that right? The, no. the, only, the shortest term possibility that I see is that, you know, if gay rights activists put their attention on Pennsylvania's courts, they could get theoretically uh, a majority on the PA Supreme Court and they could get a, a right. judicial ruling. But it's tough to imagine happening. Well, we're a Defense of Marriage Act uh, state anyway. Uh, uh, by the way, before we go to a break, I said Newtown Square for the horrific shooting. I meant Newtown. We have a Newtown Square here in Pennsylvania. Didn't mean Pennsylvania. Thanks to Keegan for correcting me on this. We're going to talk about something in the final segment where the legislature will do something <laughs> about. I promise you that after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, I promised you we were going to find something that the Pennsylvania legislature and the governor might agree. We're back to Laura Olson with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. All right, Laura, funding for roads, bridges, and trans, uh, transport, uh, roads and bridges, estimate $3.5 a year for, I don't know, time in memoriam, it looks like. 
Talk about that. What's going to happen uh, here? I don't think we're going to see a number that high in the proposal that the governor is going to bring out later this month, but we'll likely see, see something upwards towards $2 billion a year, mostly from um, uh, lifting this cap on the oil franchise tax. So it'll hike up um, uh, the, the wholesale cost of gasoline for mm -hmm. by, uh, by a little bit there, and that money would you know, go back into some of these road and bridge repairs. Um, and what we'll, what we'll have to see then is what the House and Senate do with it, if they have some other things that they can show support for, okay. other proposals, things but like the user fees that we, we've talked about as well to add some extra money in there to, to add some it, more projects. Do both of you, do you agree? Do you think they're likely to, if, if you had to mention, I mean, if you can think of some other things you know they will, you, you know, you would go, go out and bet your last dollar on, is that one of them? Yeah, this is something that, you know, like pensions, Governor Corbett has been talking about a lot, but I think even more than pensions, he said we will have a plan and we'll have it out before yeah. the budget. And he's going to put a plan out. He said on the, is that that's correct, Keegan? Yeah, he said that n numerous times. A plan on this, but Ness, we have a 41, <clears throat> I don't want to skip around here, but we have a 41, there are two big things, roads, bridges, and mass transit, pensions, we have a $41 billion pension problem. The governor's not said he will produce a plan on that with specifics, as far as I understand. Any of you disagree with that? I think he's going to say something in the budget to address and, that because we have to do at least something with this budget year to be able to address the $500 million increase in pensions. Okay, if you had to think of two or three other things that the legislature will take up, we, since we're doing a legislative review, pensions definitely, uh, and by the way, I have to admit I'm a former professor at Millers University, so I'm in the state pension system. We believe in full disclosure on this program. Can you think of anything else you think they will do they have to do a budget, obviously. Well, one other thing that's been mentioned is um, some sort of response to the child abuse task force. Um, good, so good point. What that will look like is very unclear still at this point, but um, especially on the Senate side, we've heard saying, uh, folks saying, yes, we're going to put out something to, to respond to that um, and the, um, the, the Penn State situation generally. All right, so, so we have those. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the other hot topics. Mary Wilson. Uh, sell the liquor stores, man. Ev we've done more programming on that. Uh, sell the liquor stores, either you, Keegan, Mary. Uh, anything likely to happen there? It, it, the, the way that I see it happening is if there's part of a maybe a three or four big issue deal where uh, some people give a little on transportation, other people give a little on pension, and in return they get those conservative Republicans, they get them to buy in by offering some some sort of compromise on the liquor stores, but. Uh, grand bargain is uh, is is a tough one. Grand to bargains are tough anywhere, anywhere yeah. as we found out with the with the federal government. All right, uh, we're not quite sure when we tape this what's going to happen with the privatization of the operation of the lottery, which Governor Corbett wants to do. Where, where do you think that all goes? Unions aren't wild about that. The union representing, uh, where do you think that goes? Right, I think we're looking at it. You know maybe by the time this program airs, a second extension of a bid. So another, you know, another um, an extension of the bid. Right. So we've got more time for the, you know, to, to wait for the administration to decide whether to lease the right. operations to this private company. We've got a, a union representing a portion of lottery employees that says, you know, this is a, this is, this is a nonsense, but not a nonsense plan, but we could do better. We could outpace this okay. plan. All right. I want to thank you. This was a great update. We found a couple of things the legislature will do. We talked about a bunch of things the legislature wouldn't do. All right. We'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And as always, stay well.